Hey guys, Baron here. And today we're here for our first week of the Terminals Battle Factory. Yes, we have joined another league. If you haven't watched the draft recap, which you should by the way, you really should watch that draft recap. But if you haven't, for some reason, let me just break down what this league is about. It's 12 coaches, you know, 11 weeks. We're all gonna battle each other, and all 12 of us are YouTube uploaders. So that's gonna be really, really exciting. And yet again, we're gonna get to hone our skills through this league. And in this first week, we're battling against a good friend of ours, Levity. So guys, if you're hyped about that, and just excited about the TBF in general, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to that subscribe button, and share this video with a friend or two. But with that being said, let's get really get into the team prep here. Just looking briefly at his team, he was one of like, I think it was third pick of, in total of the draft. And he got some really, really scary picks. Just, just listen to this, just listen. Tapicoco, Mega Pinzer, Halucha, Like a Rock Dusk, Klefki, Sizetoad, Skuntank, Starmie, Arcanine, Gorgeist, Miltank, and Drudigan. A lot of those things have good speed and have incredible attacking power and can just break through our team and you know our team isn't the fastest thing in the world I shouldn't say that M many of our mods are one under 100 base speed and what do we do against that what can we do to change the tide so to say well to run a trick room team and that's what we have here today starting off with quack quack our paragon 2 of course our mascot of the team our little mascot quack quack is here uh, of course, holding that Eevee Light to really, you know, get that defense boost. And in my humble opinion, like I said in the draft recap, I think Porygon 2 is probably the best Eevee Light user in the game. Except for maybe Rhydon. Um, but I think just the things that Porygon 2 can do with Eevee Light, just boosting that defense and still ha being able to balance that out with the special defense uh, and b being both Physically, physically bulky and especially bulky, uh, with a lot of HP too. You can just live hits, and I think honestly, if I calculated it correctly, uh, Porygon 2 with the Eevee Light takes about 15% of health from a Thunderbolt Top Coco. I don't know if that's uh, counting on the electric tra terrain or not, uh, but it's no matter what, it's a li very, very little damage. Uh, so he's here. He's here to take his and be that trick room setter, like we, like I said. Uh, on switch in, uh, or when I can, this Pokemon except cups a random adjacent foes ability, uh, being the trace ability, of course. Uh, something we abuse in this battle, really, and um, something that came in great usage, actually, as you will see uh, in the match. But of course, rocking that, uh, rocking moves it right now. He has a trick room, recover to get the health back. Uh, to be able to stall mods out, Toxic to help that even further, and try attack because obviously not only uh, the boosts the chance in getting a paralysis, a burn, or a, um, a freeze. It also helps us to do some sustainable damage because try attack obviously it's not only base 80 power which is decent, but it's also stab from program 2, which is kind of good in my opinion. Uh, he's rocking a specially defensive set. Uh, with 252 HP, uh, 252 plus special defense, and four special attack to really, you know, get some boost in that spe uh, try attack, uh, and calm nature, raising the special uh, defense, but lowering the attack. So Porygon has a very niche usage on this team. He's here to tr set the trick room, he's here to take hits, and he's really here to annoy the opponent and stall them out. Uh, and honestly, I know that I can run Quack Quack, um, <laughs> Quack Quack, uh, physical, but honestly, he's really, really good and in his prime when he's specially defensive. Uh, obviously, working at Eevee Light 2, he's really a niche mod that you shouldn't sleep on. Going on to the second pick here. Because uh, I didn't want any good speed stats, because I wanted to reverse the tables, um, I picked up Slow King with base 30 speed. Uh, we actually decided to trade Slow King. So this is the last week you will see David, unfortunately. Uh, we decided to trade him for a Vaporeon, which I think is going to be 
it's gonna do it kind of the same job as David here, but it's also gonna take away that double psyche type, uh, which is gonna make us uh, a little less weaker to dark types, which I think honestly is gonna be good. It's gonna be a good thing. Uh, but right now with Rocket David, because he really complements this um, this trick room team. Rocket and Leftovers to get some uh, health back whenever he needs to. Regenerator uh, to restore some uh, some HP when it switches out, so I can really switch David out whenever I want and just send him out again and get a third of my HP back. So honestly, like Quack Quack, this is a bit of a stalling mon and a bit of a mon that is just me meant to sit out there and take hits, and it's that is definitely reflected in the move set. Uh, we have Calm Mind here, obviously not only raising the special attack but raising the special defense. Uh, we have Psychic, um, which is honestly just a good stab move, uh, and of course with that special attack, of course you're gonna wreck Psychic. Slack off to get some health uh, back, just like Recover on Quack Quack to be a, just a tad bit anno more annoying, and Scald as a good stab water attack, uh, but also to be able to possibly get that bro damage, if we're lucky. Uh, looking at EV investments here, we have 252 in HP, 252 plus in defense, and uh, 4 in special attack to get some boost to that psychic and scald. Uh, but he, as you can see here, he's a physically defensive uh, mon this time. I could have run especially defensive, but yet again, we have Quack Quack, which does that job just perfectly, and we needed a physical wall, because Quack Quack, yes, he does have an evil light, but he's more of a special wall than he is a defensive wall, and that's why Sloking is here, really. Um, and Bald Nature, of course, rocking that defense racing boost, but lowering the attack, which we don't need attack, so Bald is the perfect nature right here. Uh, honestly, so David is here. I'm kind of sad to let David go in the next week uh, But I I welcome with Vaporeon with war, uh, open eyes No, uh, not open eyes. The fuck am I saying? What the fuck are you saying Byron? Open arms. That's what you call it uh, But yeah, Slokings here. Slokings is here they, Being our third pick right here, we have Bruce the Hitchmon Lee uh, Looking at his team he has some mons that really don't want to take a hit from Hitmon Lee. He has the Lycan Rock Dusk, of course. He has the both the Seismic and the Skunk Tank don't want to take a hit from this thing. Uh, he has the Mel Tank. And just a bunch of things that Hitmon Lee can be good against. He does have some decent speed, but yet again, it's not too great. And that is definitely something we can use Trick Room, even if we don't manage to set up the Trick Room right here. He obviously has some good speed then. Again, so like, I can obviously run this thing without Trick Room, which is something you need, honestly, in Trick Room. You can't just base your team on Trick Room there. You need something else. And Hitmon Lee is really here for that, and other reasons. He's working the Life Orb. I um, originally planned to put Normal Gem, uh, Knock Off, not Knock Off, uh, Fake Out, High Jump Kick on this thing. Uh, to be able to get that uh, flinch, but also to be able to just take out opponents with a high jump kick. But then, I ha I haven't really used normal gem before, but I realize it's just, especially with the, um, with the um, ability Reckless, it's a one-time usage. So then I decided to go for Life Orb, honestly, just to raise the, um, the attack of all moves, to make Hitmonlee possibly a bit more of a rounded mon, a bit more of a rounded threat, really. Um, he's obviously rocking that re Reckless ability still, uh, with a mock punch being um, priority, I had some considerations of putting uh, what is it called? Uh, not close combat, uh, focus punch. I do believe. Yeah, I had some considerations to put a focus uh, punch in this thing, but then I decided to put mock punch just to be able to do some shit that shit damage if I realize that my um, my opponent is on low health. I can just do a smock punch and take him out of the priority. He's still rocking fake out, uh, just because I need I want that flinch uh, possibility, and um, yeah, honestly, that's really why it's here. Bulk up to be able to uh, raise that defense a bit, and if attack, of course, to have some kind of setup if I really needed to. So obviously, if I realized that okay, I could take out 
top of Coco with Hippoly. I wouldn't do that, but even so, then I could run Earthquake here and just take him out with a boosted attack and possibly, if possible, live a hit from not possibly top Coco, but some of, of uh, his other mons. So I'm happy about this set and I think it's gonna work. Um, 252 plus in attack, uh, 248 in HP to make him just a bit bulky really, and 8 in special defense to be able to live some psychics here or there, whatever you want to throw in my direction. And a melt ability of course, raising his attack and lowering the special attack. So Bruce is definitely something that I'm happy about to bring this week, and uh, it's something that has a winning formula in this Trick Room team really. Uh, it's not only something that could rely on Trick Room, but something that could run independently of the Trick Room. Uh, so that's really why Hitmonlee is here. Plus, fighting type of, fire types are good, and it's just hell of a good coverage, really. Looking at our next pick here, we have Incineroar, Tony Incineroar. Of course, the Frosty Flakes mascot. How can you not name your Incineroar, Tony? Uh, Rocket Assault Mist to honestly be able to live some hits and for example be able to live a play rough from Top Coco, hopefully uh, and just Assault Fist just is good to have on this I guess a team that's really really uh, offensively uh, threatening Assault Fist is a good idea uh, Intimidate of course to be able to lower some attacks of my opponents which is going to be good because then I can abuse my own attack against them. Uh, Fire Punch here, uh, not only for stab, but for some good physical attack, and of course against a lot of things like the Gorgas, for example. And the Dark Chilarit here too for the Gorgas, but also against, for example, um, the Starmie. Uh, Thunder Punch here too for those things, and possibly, yeah. I was going to say possibly a have Lucha, yeah, possibly a Lucha, honestly, and Protect, uh, to really be able to, if he decides for whatever reason to go for example, an high jump kick on his, um, on his Lucha, I could just bait it and go for Protect, so we're chilling. <laughs> uh, looking at a V Vesmus here, 252 plus in attack, 252 in HP to make him bulky along with the Assault Vest. And for special defense to give some kind of boost to the assault vest. Rocket Amber Adamant ability, raising attack, and lower the special attack. I know there's two adamants using Mons, but that's gonna work. And Incineroar, except especially when it's less than mediocre speed, it's definitely gonna work with this Trick Room team. And it just deals with a lot of things on its team. Uh, and can dish out a lot of damage against the things that I could bait. For example, the type of co uh, not the type of Coco, the Halucha, with high jump kick. Uh, so Tony is honestly, I think, gonna do a lot of things here, and just using the Cinderor. Just it, I knew that that's, that was something I wanted to do uh, week one because Cinderor is just a really good mon, and um, I just want to try it out. Honestly, I mean this this match is partly about winning, but it's also about using our team and getting to know it. Uh, which I definitely, which is definitely a reason why I brought Incineroar here, because Incineroar is definitely one of our most interesting uh, teammates, and he definitely has a good uh, typing, and he's just, he can do so many things, he can run Band, he can run Assault Vest, he can run Leftovers if you want to try and bulky, uh, but yeah, Tony's here, he's, re he's, rock he's ready to go. Uh, <laughs> then we are sticking it, our Ferrothorn. Uh, I decided against putting. I decided against putting its steel type on this thing, mostly because I wanted to be to be a hazard setter. Uh, if I can run hazard on, for example, get a stealth bug on top of Coco, uh, use an earthquake, for example, from uh, Bruce. If I manage to do that, that will help me take the top of Coco out. If I don't manage to do that on the first round, because it will give me chip damage. Which honestly is something really good, and of course with that speed being really poor, I can use that um, in a trick room team. Uh, Rocky helmet, of course, um, doing some chip damage too to whenever my opponent hits me uh, with a contact move. Iron barbs to get some extra health of the t opponent. Power up to have a powerful grass type move uh, because I honestly wanted that. 
It could just it, it deals with it deals with the size of Toad, it deals with like a rock dusk, uh, it deals with the Starmie, uh, and it's just good. It's 120 uh, base power. It's just great. Spikes and stealth rocks, obviously it has its tether. Like that, I don't need to explain that. It's just both of those things are good, honestly. And Thunder Wave to be able to get some hacks in there if I really wanted to. Uh, possibly getting another round of stealth rocks up there if I'm lucky. Um, he, I decided to make him um, physically defensive, uh, primarily because of the Arcanide. I know the Arcanide is physical and he most often runs physical attacks. Uh, and if I can live a physical attack, which I don't think I can honestly, but it's just a good, it's a, it's a safety precaution really to run defensive um, perfect one against his team. Uh, 248 in HP and 8 in attack because power rip is physical. I honestly wanted to boost in that. And impishability, raising the defense and lowering the special attack. I don't need special attack, but I do need the defense. Uh, so yeah, that's really why why, why Ferrothorn is here. Uh, and rocking that sixth spot. Because I was pretty happy about my team, I uh, had a bit of trouble deciding really what was going to be in the sixth spot. But I eventually went for Gramble here. Uh, because I realized, okay, this is not a fairy type. Uh, this is fairy type capabilities. And that really deals with, of course, uh, Lucha. Uh, that deals with the uh, with Drudigan. I didn't have any, anything against Drudigan uh, particularly. So I decided to grab all here. And um, rocking a Stone Edge, not only Playoff, but Stone Edge, of course. Uh, being a, a counter against Mega Pinsir, because not only did I have to, to prep for the Top Coco, I had to prep for the Mega Pinsir too. Um, of course, rocks being quite effective to. Uh, to a pincer, um, of course, being a bug or flying type, uh, I decided to put Zonage on this thing. And honestly, it's got a low accuracy, but it's got great power. And I believe in a grand ball, I think it can hit. Uh, heal well to if he decides to poison me or paralyze me, or generally hacks me. I can just send uh, Fluffy out and just use Heal Bell to um, honestly um, get some uh, get that like uh, paralysis or poison out of the team. Uh, reflect here to really deal with the physical threats. I mean, he, he he runs many, many physical threats and Gramble being able to set up a reflect will probably, if it's possible, that he could help in this situation. Uh, he rocks the rattle, rattle ability. Uh, this Pokemon speed is raised one stage if hit by a bug, dark or ghost type attack. He obviously has a skunk tank. Uh, he has a uh, a Gorgast, and he has a Pinsir. So obviously, I can bait on those things uh, to go for. If, for example, I would predict that okay, Gorgast gonna is gonna go for Phantom Force here. Then I can run this Phantom Force correct. Is it? Wait, hang on. Uh, I'm gonna check. Is Phantom Force correct? Let's let let's check here because I I need to know this. Yeah, Phantom Force. Phantom Force is correct here. Uh, so now I can just run um, put out Gramble and I get a, be a speed boost, and um, that's honestly a good thing. Uh, he runs. I'm running here defensively, uh, bulky defensively, uh, with a bunch of HP and some special defense to really make him be able to last longer and be able to make him sit out longer in the field and that's honestly why Gram that's honestly Gramble uh, the sixth member just filling up the gaps in our team and honestly speed complete I'm happy about how we team prep and now we just gotta get into the battle yeah uh, let's get into it uh, I'm not doing this live uh, like I said in the PSL when if you aren't familiar with the PSL go check it out by the way it it's on the channel and it's a f another fun competitive tournament but um, I'm not gonna do live battles for one reason and one reason only uh, because I need to focus on battles I'm a new battler this is my second tournament uh, in ever <laughs> and 
really it's a good and better thing to, for me personally to focus on the battles and be completely swamped in them when I when I do them and completely submerged in them you know and be completely focused uh, and I just feel like I can't really do that if I'm not um, if I'm live essentially uh, and that's what we're doing replays but I think it's just gonna be as much fun with, for you guys because it's really just showing a battle and it, it allows me to do some post commentary and some re deeper reflections about the battle which honestly is a perk so if you guys enjoy that uh, it's Levity versus Mega Baron here I'm gonna play this without music uh, with music off wait what happened to here uh, there we go I was like what the fuck is that blue square uh, let's <laughs> let's switch sides here because I want to see from my perspective because I'm selfish like that no I'm not um, okay I start out the Porygon 2 because okay what t team did he bring uh, no surprises he bought the type of Coco and the Halucha of course I knew that that core was gonna come uh, it's gonna take no surprise he wanted to deal with my Furthorn uh, go guys Pokemon, not surprised there. Like a rock dusk, a good mon, see possibilities, and a size toad, which honestly I kind of didn't expect, but it's something I could definitely deal with. So I decided to uh, start up with Quackoy, which is not gonna, he's not gonna start up with Halu, uh, with a Lucho. He's probably gonna start up with Top Coco, and that's what he did. Uh, he goes for he has Electric Search up. He goes for Volt Switch here, which does like 25% towards me. Which is good. He gets the uh, Gorgas out here. Uh, I go for Trick Room. Uh, I realize he's probably gonna set up against me because he does. Uh, with the Leech Seed, I decided to go to Toxic here because I realized okay, Casper or Gorgas here is really, really bulky. And what's the best way to deal with a Pokemon? It's a uh, Toxic in the round two. <laughs> and uh, obviously, he gets his Leech Seed damage off here. I decided to switch out uh, Quack Quack and go for. Uh, Tony here because I realized okay, he's probably gonna go for a ghost type attack That's not gonna do a lot of damage or he's gonna go for a grass type attack That's not gonna do a lot of damage or he might just do go for a hacks, which Honestly, I don't really know what he would do against me He go for the willow wisp which obviously I'm immune against which was good Because uh, now I know he has willow wisp and I can play against that uh, I go for fire punch here to Potentially do some damage if he de decides to stay in but he seems that he's not gonna uh, I honestly maybe should have gone for Dark Lari Darkest Lariat here because it would have done a little bit more damage, but it's not that big, big, big of a difference. Um, he decides to, yeah, I decided to switch out here, go for uh, Furthorn. He goes to Stealth Rocks here, uh, which in retrospect I probably should have run uh, Rapid Spin Hitmon Lee because that would have been good because uh, I could have run, get gotten rid of the rocks right here and. Uh, Prevented him from sending out a Scythe and setting up rocks essentially because I could, I could just send up Bruce. Uh, he goes to Flamethrower here. Uh, and he goes for Gorgeist. Uh, I honestly wanted to play against him and hoping that it would have protected me to have Earthquake. But I don't know if it did. He might have. But I did go for Earthquake here. Revealing that. Which honestly. I, I could have re revealed that like later, but honestly, if I would have got for a mock punch, uh, that would have been worse. So yeah, uh, I decided to spoke up here. Yeah, um, to force him out essentially because he doesn't know what I have. He, I could easily run ice punch um, or something else that deals with him uh, or blaze kick. Blaze kick is better. That's what I meant. Uh, I go for Tony here. Uh, to yet again force him out. He goes to the Wall of Bits, which I protect, and it, it's immune, of course. Uh, I force him out into Swamp Thing, and I realize, okay, I could do for, do, go for Darkest Lariat here. Does some decent damage, which was really good. I go for Quack Quack here. Uh, wanted to put up that Trick Room, I think, again. Yes. It goes Scald here, I, and that's a good thing about the Trace ability. I talked about this earlier, how it could come into usage. This is a prime example right here. When I, so that's nice to run water absorb and you switch out to uh to Porygon 2 and he goes for water type attack that could just play hugely in your advantage and it just stood right here so i'm really happy about having put trace on quack quack here uh he goes toxic 
I obviously go for Trick Room here. Uh, I guess I don't care about the Toxic, I recover. Um, I go for sticking it here, forcing him out. We do Casper. Um, what happens here? Yeah, I go for Power Whip. Yeah, takes him out. Good thing. Uh, I go for he go for stun stun tank here. I go for Thunder Wave, knowing that he's not gonna go for uh, for a thing for it because he's obviously predicting me to switch out because. Um, because he knows that I know that he has flamethrower. That's kind of complicated. Uh, but he goes for pursuit here, which is honestly the best thing that could have happened in my favor. Uh, because then I know that he's not going to go for pursuit next turn because he's predicting me to stay in. I think that's what happens here. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I know. He got paralyzed. Even better. Uh, I, he just has a swamp thing here. Uh, I go for Earthquake, which does some decent damage, and here's where I fucked up. It's not a Mega Baron battle, unless Baron fucked up. <laughs> uh, I go for the fake out here, misclicking. I would have gone for the Earthquake here, because it would have taken it would have taken him out. That's the, it just feels bad, man. But I go for a fake out here. Uh, yeah, I, I fail, of course, because it doesn't work that way. Uh, I go for Earthquake here, but it's too... Oh, he protects. Fucking hell. He, get, he just gets damaged back because he has leftovers. I go for Mac Punch here, because I know that I might be able to do something if he goes for uh, something. I don't know. I don't, I, it wouldn't make it. It wouldn't make a difference here, honestly. It goes toxic here, taking me out. And honestly, I could just, I could have just taken out Saxon so, so much earlier, but I misclicked. That's the, that's the, that's the epitome of a fucking cock block in Showdown. Just fucking click and misclick. Just clicking something that you're not supposed to. I wouldn't take, I probably would have taken this Saxon so out. I do believe, because I think it, it was enough damage for him to take taken out. Um, I think I go for a. How I guess I'm just gonna see how much the earthquake does. Thirty-nine percent. If I'm not mistaken, he had less than thirty-nine percent of his health. So I wouldn't take him. I would definitely take him out. Uh, so it's just really shitty that ha that happened. But we move on. I go for Thorn here. Obviously, he wanted to switch out, which he does. He goes into Donald here. Uh, I go for Power Rip. Because it, honestly, it's, it's the best thing I could do. Uh, I made another. M you wouldn't. I wouldn't call it misplay. Um, I decide to s kind of take this gun tank down with me here. It goes thing for me, which I know I can live. Uh, power up here again. Uh, but after match, of course, takes me out. I kind of forgot about the after match. Um, do you call it aftermath or after match? It's. After math, after math, um, but yeah, it takes me out. Uh, I could have saved Ferrothorn for longer, but it allows me to have a clean switch in here, which honestly is a good thing. So he's taken out. I don't really need him for anything else. I could have used him for a Lycan Rock, honestly. That probably wouldn't be good. Now that I think about it, that would be good because I had power rip. I, I that would have destroyed him. He goes to the top, Coco here. Um, I miscut this because I didn't count the electric train. I thought, I thought David would have been able to live this one, uh, but he doesn't. Goes to Thunderbolt. I is I'm taken out. That was just that was a stupid move. That's not even mixed up. That's just terrible fucking play. Um, but I move on here. I go for Quack Quack. Uh, I think I wanted another Trick Room here, or oh, I went for Tri Attack. Let's see what I did. He switches out. I go for Tri. No, I go for Trick Room. Yeah, I go for Trick Room. Uh, which, yeah, goes Protect honestly wanted me to stall me out. Which I think he's successful with, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he is. Uh, I could have gone for Recover here. I don't, did I? Did I go for Recover? Yeah, I did. I did, I, I did go for Recover. But honestly, like, the, the Poison damage is so big here. Uh... I'm just waiting for him to be in a position that I can use a try attack to ensure that it, uh, he's taken out. Uh, he goes to Scald, I go for try attack here, and I get a mineral. And uh, it, it would have done more uh, according to my calculations, but I get a mineral. Uh, so Quack Quack is taken out here. 
uh, unlucky as shit, but yet again, I, I think I, I, I'm, I'm, I figure, okay, I'm, I basically lost here, because whatever he sends out, I can't do anything against, against Tapagoko here. I mean, and especially like with um, with a Lycan Rock just sitting there, with a C, with a C capability, um, there's nothing I could do really. Uh, so I go for uh, reflect here. Um, Honestly, maybe wanted to minimize that uh, physical damage if he decides to go for Earthquake or something. Uh, I, he goes Scald again. Uh, I go for Plague Roth here, take him to Sysbito out. And uh, he goes he to goes Coco here, do some Stealth Rock damage. He gets the Electric Search up, takes me out, which is fine. Honestly, I didn't want to switch out to Incineroar here. Um, I get the Intimidate drop with uh, Incineroar. And he goes Thunderbolt. Which does, le which almost takes me out, but I live in 1%. That would be so clutch if it was early in the match, but it doesn't make a difference now, because whatever, I, can I can't do anything against a like a rock and a, a halucha, there's just no way. Uh, but I actually managed to take the Tepacoco out with a fire punch, and that was just like, nice. Last thing uh, in the match, uh, to just like be able to take the Coco out, and I, I was so scared of it. Um, beginning this match, and I managed to take him out, which I'm super proud of. But obviously, like, this thing has a, a cell rock, goes from that, I'm taking out, and that's GG. Um, I feel like I could have done a lot of things differently here. Uh, I could have, for example, of course, not have misclicked uh, with the uh, with uh, Bruce. Um, because obviously that earthquake would have taken the Sashmi Toad out. And I could have, like, I could have used, uh, I could have used that to my full advantage because Sashmi Toad became an issue in the end. Um, and honestly, I could have saved my Fire Thorn for longer, probably. Uh, and just, you know, um, have um, saved it for the Lyca Rock. Because I know that I would take it like a rock out with the perfect one. That, that was no issue. Uh, so honestly, just... And I could have saved... Honestly, I think I could have won this batch if I saved Sloking for longer. I just got really sloppy with, with the electric terrain and capped it wrong. Because, I mean, he would have dealt. He would have been a perfect match and threat against uh, both the Viking Rock with the Skull and the... Um, and a Lucha with Psychic. Honestly, he wouldn't have been able to do so much against me because, and, and obviously, I had Slack off. Um, so that's honestly my, I think, biggest chance of winning if I had one. And I think, I, you know, it's very hard to play perfectly with a Porygon 2 in Trick Room. Uh, I feel like I could have done better though uh, against a Sysu Toad uh, and just had to switch out to something else, honestly. I might have I might have been able to do that and save Porygon 2 for longer. But yet again, I didn't need really need Porygon 2 after that point. Uh, so I think the best play for us in this match to turn it around would have been to not send out Slow King in that position and save him for longer. Uh, and obviously, the, if I would have gone after Incineroar immediately against that type of Coco. I could have lived it, and I could I could have just gone for five punch. Um, but yeah, again, I needed that uh, clean switch in to Zed War uh, to do that, because so I needed to to select up Gramble. Uh, so yeah, I could play better, but yet at the same time, Levity is a very good opponent. He's way more experienced than I am. I'm happy that it didn't. I didn't get. <laughs> I didn't get sweeped by Top Coco. I didn't get sweeped by Top Coco. That was my hope going into this match, and that didn't happen. That hope obviously not being not to be sweeped by Top Coco. If you if your hope is in a, in a competitive matches to be swept by Top Coco, then there's nothing wrong with you. But yeah, that's about it really. That's week one of the TBF. Uh, next week I do believe we're facing up against the Gengar Raichu, another one of uh, the TBF coaches, and another one of um. And another one of my newly acquainted friends, so I'm super excited about uh, building him and just trying out my team more. And um, 
obviously we have to say bye goodbye to Stoking here. But we welcome the party with more open arms when we come back next week. And guys, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to that subscribe button, and share this video with a friend or two. But with that being said, I'm gonna get the hashtag out of here. Thank you guys for checking out the video. Before, until, and after. See you next time though. Stay awesome.